Okay, um, so I don't know if this will make it into the video or not, but I thought I'd kind of show you some areas in my apartment of how I like to shoot some pictures and things and how things are in my situation. Because when I get home from work, this is what it looks like. So it's already getting pretty dark. Um, I can't film out there and even by this window there's just not much light. So with my lights in my apartment on, it's kind of like this. It's very yellowy. Um, I did purposely buy for this light here, like the white bulbs, so it's not as yellowy. Um, so that does kind of help. So that's a cheap, hey, focus back on me here. Thank you. <laughs> so that's kind of a cheap, like, if you have to have light bulbs anyway, get some that aren't yellow. Like if I try to shoot with like my normal living room lighting here, it's very yellow, especially this one because the lamp is yellow, lampshade is yellow. So, um, that's one thing. Um, another thing, as you can see, again, I bought the white lights. My mom thought I was crazy when I bought these, but I, cause she was with me and I didn't want to explain that it's for Instagram and YouTube. But a lot of times when I film for YouTube and stuff, I'll sit like here with this behind me. I need to fix those lights, but it kind of adds a nice picture, like a nice, I don't know, it adds the little bokeh lights the, in the background. And I purposely got, like, I like lighter colors, but I have lighter bedding, and you could just put a white sheet, whatever, over it just to give it kind of a clean look, because I can't paint the walls or I would paint them white or something to make them look better, but I'm not, I, I can't paint them, so. Um, another trick, if you need more lighting, that I saw someone on YouTube do, so even if you're filming with your phone or something that doesn't have this flip-up screen, which I'm really bad about looking at instead of the lens, you can use, like, a makeup mirror and set it behind your phone, so, like, a makeup mirror like this, and turn it on, oops, and then, so if I were to sit, this would be really close, but already, just from that, there's a lot of light on my face. Sorry, you can see my messy closet and my bridesmaid dress. But, um, so there are a lot of options. Um, so that's kind of what this video is going to be about, is how to use the lighting you have. And, but one of the key things is shooting in raw, which I'm not good about and I'm gonna start doing it more now. But you can edit a lot more of the contrast and the exposure and the saturation and things without getting like grainy messed up pictures from it and you can do them on your phone the lightroom app is free for your phone you can use it for free just as it is if you pay for a subscription you can also edit raw photos on your phone because um, i like to transfer them straight from my camera so you also get a three free 30-day trial period with lightroom so you can test it out and see how you like it you don't have to commit to it you can just do that i'm on one right now so i'm gonna start trying it um, and then I think it's like $10 a month, which I don't know that I'm willing to do right now at this point in my life because I just, that's not in the budget. So that's a key thing. So now let's get into more camera settings and how I set up for different things. Okay. So I kind of showed you guys a little bit of how I set up like lighting in my apartment. The big thing right now that you don't see is that there are two giant studio lights right now. Um, and they're very white lighted. So I do have my light on. Um, I can also turn this other one on. And then I can even angle it so that gave me a little more light. What I'm going to do, I will probably film the rest of this maybe on my Canon G7X or on my iPhone so that I can show you the menus on my camera. This is my Olympus OM DEM 10 that I'm using right now. And I'm using the 10, but it shoots in 4k which is nice but I haven't gotten the hang of using it so that it doesn't like use up all of my memory so um, for right now I'm shooting in just um, HD on that one um, but I'm gonna go through on here the whole menu of how I set my camera up when I do like low lighting situations I'm not gonna use auto because the lighting will be super yellow and super dark um, I'm gonna use the white balance tool um, use a lot of manual settings. Um, this one is really nice because I can bounce the flash. So what I mean by that is I can tilt the flash up instead of out and that will bounce the flash up. Um, so it kind of makes the camera, like the flash is less harsh and it gives you more natural lighting to it. Um, so I'll do that. Um, but also you can use your phone. You don't have to have a fancy camera. 
Um, you can use like a camera like this, like my G7X. But yeah, if you're using your phone, I'll go through all of this, but I just kind of wanted to give... I don't really know what this part's for, we'll see when I edit. <laughs> I swear I had this all planned out and then all the things I thought I was going to do look, looked really cool in my mind. And as I'm doing this, I don't even know if this video is working because I've actually never filmed on this camera before, so we'll see. It looks promising from the mirror I've got set up behind me. Hey guys, okay, so I'm back. Um, I tried to set up, I really wanted to try this because I've been watching a lot of YouTuber videos. I tried to set this up on a tripod and it like, I, this camera's not that old. It's from like 2015, but I guess it doesn't have continuous autofocus or something. I don't know, I need to figure that out because it like couldn't stay focused on me. Also, this lens is so ridiculous that my tripod won't stay up. So I had it like balanced on all these things. And then like having a mirror behind me, I could kind of see the picture, but not really to tell if I was in focus or not. So then I tried what someone else showed me to do and hook it up. You can hook your cameras, um, some of them at least, up to your computer with the cord that comes with it and then use your camera screen or your computer screen as the monitor, which is really cool if you can get that to work. Even though I have the CD that came with this, I couldn't get it to install on my computer. So I'm guessing it's too old or what but I couldn't get it to work so I'll keep trying on that because the, the quality of this I mean this lens is insane this is the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 um, I bought this like three years ago maybe um, in order to start doing um, astrophotography like I literally went into the camera store when I lived in Greenville North Carolina in the middle of nowhere where I, there were a lot of stars to see and was like I want to start doing astrophotography. What lens do I need? So they told me to get this one, which it did work. I, I got actually some shots of stars, which was cool. Not anything like really worth using because I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't know manual settings back then, but I've had this lens since then. Literally had to have a payment plan on it. This lens is so expensive. It was like eight, nine hundred dollars. And then I was like, did I really need to do that? So, um, but now I'm realizing it's a great portrait lens even. It's just that it's so heavy and I can't always get perfectly clear photos on my Nikon. So it's something I have not used as much because of that. So that's why you guys know I use my Olympus mirrorless cameras all the time. Um, but I can still kind of get the settings right on this. So back to the rest of this. Um, so I'm going to kind of move this camera around to show you what I have set up right now. Because right now, picture quality is pretty good. Um, it looks like it's really light in here. Um, my secret is I have got white light in this lamp and then I've got two studio lights here um, so and you don't have to have studio lights um, I just bought them off Amazon so not even that expensive and they even came with like a backdrop and things but it wasn't great quality and I left it at my roommate's old place because I was like nah, I don't really want it and it's kind of hard to pack up so I mostly just use these lights but honestly sometimes I'll use these just when I'm like sitting in my bedroom and I just want it to be brighter and feel sunnier if it's like a gloomy day and I just want to feel because they actually tend to like having these white lights on like gives me more energy than the yellow lights so I actually just use the lights sometimes they also came with black umbrellas and I'm not sure I guess they dim some of the light I don't know if I've ever used them but anyway um, my camera is also set on manual right now um, my Canon which is nice about the Canon G7X even though it's like a little tiny kind of point and shoot you can set it to do manual settings this camera does come come out with some amazing photographs and videos like I don't know that it's worth the price of what it is and I bought mine used on eBay and it still was expensive not as expensive as it would have been outright but so I don't know that it's worth that but at the same time you have this little teeny tiny camera that you can carry everywhere it does overheat though really fast so that's the annoying thing about it and the batteries die quick um, but so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my camera in front and go over my Olympus camera and go over what settings I use to make pictures look a little better it will have to depend on the lenses you're using too um, so like my Olympus here and then I also have the Olympus pen so these are my two and these are the ones I use all the time I honestly can't decide this one's a little bit higher end but it's an older model this one's just really stylish it doesn't have the best lens on it right now it has the other one's kit lens on it um, but the thing with these kit lenses 
they can take some great photos, especially if you really get into the manual settings, but they go down to a 3.5 f-stop. So they're not really going to give you any of that blurry background. It, it's just, that's not what this lens can do. Um, so I, my first thing after I bought that, this camera, cause this was my first one that came with that lens on it. I bought this lens, which is, a uh, 25 millimeter, 20 millimeter, something like that with the Olympus, because they're like a micro four thirds lens. You basically double what you have and that's what it would equal on a full frame, normal camera. So this is basically like a 50 millimeter, which is what most people shoot on that gives them the nice blurry background. They either shoot on a 50 or an 85 usually. So this is a 50. Um, and it's a 1.7. Um, so this does give nice blurry background. That's what I use for 90% of my Instagram photos aside from my iPhone. It's pretty much these two literally for all my photos. Um, and this camera is nice and tiny. I carry it in my purse every day so that I can take it out and take pictures if I want to practice. Because that is the other key to doing good photography. you got to practice. Like even if you don't have anything cool to take pictures of like I'll sit here literally with my laptop and a can of coke because that's what I'm drinking and just be taking pictures trying to get the focus right the coloring right and I'm like wow this is a lot of really stupid photos on my camera but it's helping me get the settings better especially the more you do it the more it clicks um, and all cameras have different menu settings so honestly finding the manual settings and stuff on my Nikon is actually a lot harder than finding them on this now that I know how to do this so um, let me walk you through this. Okay, so here is my Olympus. So I'm going to click on this screen here. Actually, let me make sure I'm on. Nope. Hang on. Manual. There we go. Manual. That's the key. Manual right there. Okay, this button. I have this set up to use the live menu, I think is what it's called in Olympus. So if I do this. You're gonna get this menu. Now it is a touch screen, so, um, but I tend to just do this. Um, ISO, so ISO is gonna be your exposure. Um, so you're going to want, if you're indoors and you don't have great lighting, you're gonna want it to go higher and higher to give you a brighter picture. You don't really wanna go that high. Um, the highest, the highest I would really probably go is about 2000 because you're gonna get a lot more graininess the higher ISO you go. Lower ISO would be for like daylight. So if it's like normal sunny day, you're literally going to be down like here. Um, which actually is what it's telling me to do right now because I've got so much bright light. That was probably not a great photo. I'm not really sure. Oh, look, I didn't even try and it's actually in focus. Um, but so we're going to turn this back up. So I'm only going to go to a thousand right now. Um, then we're going to go, so up here I've got two wheels. Um, this one here is going to control my f-stop. So even though this is a fixed lens, it apparently can do more. I'm going to go all the way to 1.7. 1.7 is going to give you the most light coming into your lens and also give you that blurry background. And then the shutter speed is here. The slower the shutter speed, the more light is going to come into your camera to give you a brighter picture. But it is also going to be harder to hold the camera still for that long and get a clear picture. Um, so I really wouldn't go below like 15 unless you have a camera with really good image stabilization, which Olympus is actually known for theirs. So these cameras are actually really, really good at that. Like I can hold this, take a picture. Honestly, I'll do this because I have a touch screen um, shutter and it's probably too bright because the ISO is up, yeah. And I don't know how well you can see this on here either. So um, I'm going to turn my ISO back down. Oops. Because since I have all this light in here, I don't need all that. So if I were to do the same thing again, you've got this picture here. I'm trying to see how you guys can see it clearly. Um, it's probably gonna be easier if I put something in front and take a picture of something up close. So if I were to put my other camera right here, I can't be too close to it because that could be a problem. Hang on, we're gonna make this work. Your camera sometimes will not let you get too close to something else. So you can already see that's pretty in focus there. I want to focus on the Olympus pen part. 
my camera was having a hard time with it because I'm too close. So. And there you go. Now if I do it like down here on its level, it'll blur more of the background behind it. So it got, don't know how much of that you can see, oops. It got a nice blurred background. Now I'm going to turn the shutter speed up because since I have all this light in here, I don't need that low of a shutter speed. Now, the, so you can see the screen, the picture getting darker, the faster the shutter speed goes, because it's gonna be really fast. It's funny because it still sounds slow because it's confused. So look at the picture I just took, like completely dark, you can't see anything because that's not the correct shutter speed. So we are gonna go, because if you have a low ISO, which is what I'm on right now, you kind of need a lower shutter speed too. No, that's wrong. Never mind, don't listen to that. Anyway, let's change our shutter speed. Now you can go really low, which I don't need to do. If you were to go somewhere like here, that's when you're doing like moving lights or water or something like, but you really want a tripod for that. So I'll go like, I think 30 is probably good for me for right now where I am with this lighting. It sounds really slow right now. Like it's really taking its time today. It's kind of funny. I'm not sure why it's doing that. So it's mostly focused on the lens cap there. It's only going to focus on part of it too. If I were to get closer, then it can focus on the words where it says Olympus pen. So it is giving me, I know you guys can't see that that well, but it is giving me a good picture. So like if I take a picture of these point shoes, let's scoot this back here. It has nicely blurred out the rest of my background. Now these are too bright right now because to be honest, this kind of is a bright picture right now. Um, but I can even get pretty close up and still get a good picture. So just really good quality and it does really depend on your lens. Um, now let's go back to the settings here. So I this is on full manual right now. If you need to start out easier, start out doing like aperture or shutter speed priority and figure those out first where the camera will automatically do the other settings for you. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm just getting better at it. Finally, it's been years, but finally. So now the rest of the things in here, this is really important. The white balance is what I set to make sure that my pictures are not super yellow because that's what the lighting looks like. So right now I'm on, I actually had to set it weird today. I'm on this fluorescent one that's meant for white for fluorescent lights because that's what I have. So it kind of balances it, hence, hence white balance. If I were to do incandescent, which is for yellow lighting, it actually is turning mine blue because I don't have any yellow for it to cancel out. Um, cloudy actually looks fairly normal right now because that's kind of what my lighting looks like. So if I took a picture right now, it doesn't look bad. It's actually just like a close up of the point shoes, which I actually kind of like that picture, huh? Um, and then you've got shadow. Sunny is what you'd use just like every day. You guys can't see this because actually maybe I need to set this camera on, not that white balance. Give me just a second. Okay, I readjusted my Canon settings because it was actually showing things a little too washed out so you weren't getting the true picture of what I'm seeing. Um, so this, and I'll try and put a small image of these pictures in as I've taken them into the video so that you can kind of see what they actually turned out like. Um, and then auto is it's going to try and make the decision for itself, but auto still a lot of times ends up being a little yellowy. Now this one's actually not. So on my Olympus, this is auto and I'll put this little thumbnail in. I don't hate that picture. I need a comp. The other part of its composition, like I really need to get better at that and I'm not good at that. Gainers are also not the easiest shoes to photograph either. Um, so, um, and then, oop, wrong button. More white balance. Um, you can go to, there's other options as well, but white balance flash, I don't know. Underwater. 
I wasn't planning on taking this underwater, but all right. Um, so I'm gonna go back to fluorescent because that's what's gonna give me the most natural lighting since I'm in fluorescent lighting right now. Then um, other things I said on here, I don't really touch the um, focus here, the focus points. I'll let it use any of them. Um, that's just the quality of the photo ratio. This focus mode, um, for taking just normal pictures, honestly, this is continuous out of focus, which means it'll continually follow something and focus on it. Um, so if I were to hold my hand out and even moving my hand, it's still going to try and, okay, <laughs> you get the idea though. It's going to try and follow it and stay in focus with it. Um, single autofocus is you find autofocus once and that's it. <laughs> manual is you do it yourself, like with the lens, because you can do that. You can twist the lens to manually do your own focus. Um, I don't really know what the rest of these are. Tracking is the one where it really follows you. So hang on, let me see if I can show you. So that little dot's going to follow you around. Um, cause you do want to make sure that what you're trying to get in focus is in focus. That's important. That's the worst thing is then when you get to your photos later and you're like, Oh, look, nothing's in focus. These are nice. So I can change the coloring. Um, like I can make things more or less red or green. I don't really need to do that right now, so I just left it. Um, same with that one, hang on. The ones I usually touch are, okay, so this is important. This is the picture mode. I have it on vivid right now, but if I were to turn it to natural, it's gonna make it much less yellow. Vivid is gonna bring out the colors, natural is gonna bring it more normal. Um, let's see. You guys can kind of see things are a little yellowier looking right now. And so we've got natural, vivid's what I normally have it on. Eye enhance is for like skin tone and features. Um, let's go back this way. Muted is going to be muted coloring, so nothing's going to be too bright. And then portrait, I don't really know what the difference with portrait is, honestly. Monotone. This is um, e-portrait is the one that's going to do a lot of skin stuff. Color creator. I don't know what a lot of these are. Then there's just some fun features that I don't need to go into right now. So Olympus has a lot of that stuff. We're going to go back to vivid. And then sharpness. I always turn my sharpness way up on these because it's going to make your pictures more sharp. And again, I like to use my touch focus here because then it focuses and takes the picture with the focus exactly where I touched, which I like. I'm gonna have a lot of pictures of these point shoes in the exact same spots when I'm done. Uh, hopefully I can find the right pictures to put into my thing. Maybe I should start taking pictures of other things, right? <laughs> like my phone here or other things. Like I like having tech in photos. So like if I were to make a flat lay or something, I would put like one of my phones or a phone screen lit up, um, things like that or cameras. I like having my cameras in photos. Um, let's see back to this. So sharpness, I always turn up. Um, this is saturation. I always turn the saturation at least down one so that things are not too colorful because I don't want them to be over colorful, especially if I'm taking stuff uh, indoors in indoor lighting. Um, this, I think I usually have it on high. Actually, it just kind of gives you a little bit brighter image and sharper. And then contrast, I usually have up a little bit too for the same reason as sharpness. Um, I don't know what that does. Um, yeah, that's just a cool function that even though I have my phone or my camera, camera um, on a fixed lens, which means you cannot zoom it, you are the zoom, there is no zoom on the lens, I can do this and it'll zoom in on things like just with me pressing this button, but it's not an actual zoom, it's literally just it's cropping the photo. So you don't really wanna take a photo like that because it's gonna be cropped. It's not gonna be an actual photo at that focal length. Um, so, but like if I were to take this photo, you guys can't see it, but it's in focus. <laughs> and then I got my little Christmas lights all bokeh-y in the back with like that blurred background look because, you know. So that's what you'll see. And it's in focus even at that slow a shutter as it sounded, but like you can see the lights all blurred in the back. 
Okay, so hopefully those all made sense. I know every camera is different, but you can find those settings on any camera. Um, I'm going to go through a few of the questions people had for me, and then I'm going to do something with showing you a couple other options for like flat lays and things um, that'll make your life a little easier. So as far as the questions people had, um, we had tips to improve quality of the photo, mainly for flat lays. So I'm going to be doing that in a minute. Um, quality of the photo, a lot of it's going to be don't shoot in dim lighting, like have some sort of lighting. And if you can get the fluorescent -y white lights, it's going to look better. Um, the other thing which I mentioned earlier is if you can take your photos in raw, which with an iPhone or Android, you cannot do that. But with a camera, even like these, and even my Canon, I think, can take, I don't know if Canon, <laughs> even these can take raw images. Raw basically means there's more that you can do to the photos post-production um, because it's kind of like having a negative of the photo. So you can do a lot more with like the exposure and the saturation and stuff without it getting grainy or like oversaturated from what you're doing to it. I haven't done much of that. I'm going to start doing more of that now that I'm kind of learning more about it, but I think that'll be a good thing. Um, if you can't avoid taking photos in the dark lighting, like, I mean, really there's no reason you can't like put some sort of lighting around you. If it is a yellowish light, then like I said, adjust the camera settings to adjust the white balance, adjust the saturation if you can, things like that. Um, put Christmas lights behind you, things like that, like fairy lights, things like that to add to your photo. Because if you put those kind of in the background, it'll kind of cancel out the fact that your photo is not as um, like bright and sunny and clear because when you have like things like Christmas lights in there, you don't want it to be bright and sunny and clear. You want it to be kind of more mysterious and magical. Um, so like kind of like when I showed you guys earlier around my bed, like behind it, I have the fairy lights kind of pinned up on the ceiling, or on the ceiling, on the wall behind it, so that when I take YouTube videos, not this one, because I'm out here with all this stuff set up, but when I normally take YouTube videos, I will do them in there, because I can sit in front of that and have all that behind me, and it kind of blurs it nicely and makes it look kind of soothing. <laughs> so there's that. If you're going to take photos on your iPhone, use the back camera. Do not use the front camera. Um, if you're trying to do it of yourself, so here are other things. So not just of taking photos of things, but taking photos with yourself in them. Um, if you have an Apple watch, you can use it as a remote shutter. So if you were to go to your photos, I will show you. It is going to open my camera and it is showing me what is on my camera right now, which is me with my hand over it. But like, so you can see me. Um, but then you can set it as a timer from there or just take it as it is. Um, you can also, I used to have a little teeny tiny easy handheld remote flash thing or remote shutter button that I got off of Amazon for like $5 that I used to use for my phone pictures. Um, and again, you want lighting around you. If you have more lighting on you like these, like especially the studio lights, you're not going to get as much shadow. Whereas if I were just using that light or just using especially like fan, like ceiling fan lights, those give you really weird shadows and yellow lighting. So you kind of want to watch those as well. Um, you can always like, you don't have to have a tripod. I'm not even, okay, I'm using the Gorilla Pod right now, but like normally I don't even use a tripod. I just like would stack up my candles or stack things up. And then I have this mirror that I bought at Target really cheap, like a panel mirror. You can use that. You can use a makeup mirror. You can use whatever you have that works. You don't need all the fancy equipment if you can't get it, it's fine. Um, and then with your iPhone, so, in your camera, yeah, let's turn that off me for now. So in here, we've got it on the back facing camera, um, some interesting bits that you can use. Um, for one thing, you can put a filter on it originally and just make it less yellow like that. Uh, vivid cool one makes it more higher contrast and less yellow. So you can kind of see the difference of them as I go through dramatic cool. The cool ones are going to have less yellow. The warm ones are going to have more yellow. So there's that. I'm going to go back to normal. Um, you can then, uh, let's see here. If you 
like want to focus on a point. <laughs> I know, right? Like if I were to hold this here, if I want to focus on that, hold it till it does the auto lock. I don't know about Androids. I've never had one. Actually I did. I hated it. <laughs> um, you can darken this then, or you can lighten it a lot. Um, I recommend just doing whatever's there, but holding it on that. And then you can take your photo and then in the photo editing, which I'm just going to do here, but you can edit in Lightroom as well. Um, I will usually not do those. I'll usually go in here. I like to adjust the brilliance. That's one of my favorites but it does give you more grain usually. Um, you can adjust the brightness. Um, if you go into color, you can turn down the cast, which turns down some of the warmth. So if I were to press it, that's the original, that's what it looks like now, brighter and whiter. Um, you can obviously always like zoom it in, crop it, whatever. But if you crop, you're going to get more noise because it's gonna be grainier. Now you can also obviously with an iPhone use portrait mode. Portrait mode is not great in low light, I will say that. If I were to do this, just because I'm trying to get this. I don't know how that turned out, let's see. It's not a great photo, honestly. It's kind of out of focus. So I'd rather use a camera than use portrait mode in low lighting. Even in this lighting, portrait mode is not great. Um, like you can tell it's working. It looks better than normal camera mode, but it's still going to be kind of like grainy and like, that's not a bad picture, but it's going to be grainy. Whereas if I use normal mode and just get up close, it's going to be a much clearer photo. So portrait mode is great, but I think it works better in low or in, well, in low, in normal lighting, like sunlight and daylight. Um, so there's that. I'm not good at video editing. That is something I have not mastered. I get too frustrated too quick. And then I just want to like be done and say, okay, I'm good. Bye. Um, but now we're going to work on flat lays and kind of show you tips for that, that I have.